these young students are learning the engineering design process while they're doing uh, STEM and STREAM activities. To find a problem, they have to do some solid research, then they have to individually brainstorm by themselves, then they're going to brainstorm with a peer partner, then they can go tackle the materials and they can start the amazing constant circle of create, test, and prove. Okay, today these third graders are taking on the STEM challenge of being able to take supplies to people in a flood. We used our real world research was the 2010 local floods. During this research, they were very sincere, deeply caring about everything. We are doing the 2010 flood. We're trying to make boats to uh, secure the people and not make them uh, like stranded in their houses. What did your best prototype hold so far? 36. That's impressive. 19. That's great. Lily? Our best holds 68. Whoa! 68. Well, not, was that your first prototype that held that? That was our third. Did you guys hear that? That was their third. So they did a prototype, they put their big old brains together and came up with a second one. A third one, 68. Fourth, they're on a fourth prototype. Now that is called work. That is fantastic. Thanks to amazing resources, our STEM lab is up and running. This gives entire classes the opportunity to walk in there and tackle very difficult challenges. They have the time, the space, and the materials needed, and they really can go deeper in an environment like that than they could in a regular classroom. We exactly. first have top uh, uh, and paper and paper. And then this is how it turned out. This is how it was like a walk up. I need some for scissors. It was so fast. The paper would just make it fly. Yeah. Since we didn't have enough tape, I used my tape. And we put a lot of bears on. We could have done better, but this is the best we could have done. I'm like 12. And then we added the tape and then we like And what's the hardest part of this project? I'm trying to get the tape to stay on the table so it's not to fall. Yes. <laughs> 
I'm used to waiting for a wrap up here. And then We are going to be learning about protective adaptations to try and design a creature that can blend into more than one environment. Trey, what's one thing that you remember reading about, taking notes about, or just uh, seeing a video about? Oh, uh, I said, um, I know that usually the long and thick beaks get the most food in the... In a... To make a beak that can pick up, um, a village beak um, to pick up food without, um, without using our hands. And if we drop it, then we have to, we have, we have to keep it wherever it is, and we have to, when we're building it, we have to be really careful. We have to fly These are our plans. Um, I wrote down for how I can build a beak to collect as much food as, without touching it. The Camouflage Institute issued you a challenge. They want to know about a creature that can survive in more than one environment. So I want you to get your pencil and you're going to kind of restate the challenge. I'm going to give you about two minutes to write down what the problem is. from two different habitats so it could live in both of the habitats. You like this project? Yes. What's fun about it? Um, that you get to make your own creature and you even get to um, make its own name. And you get to be really creative about it. And is that your, your design or your plan? Um, Actually, all I have written down is just the main problem that I am going to draw. Okay, so I'm going to give you another minute or so to look, and um, and then we'll get started. Come back. to like sketch out our designs and how we were supposed to like get the food into this and first of all we were supposed to ask a question what are we supposed to make it out of and I said can we make a bird beak that can eat the food we have and then you're supposed to do background research and we did that a couple of days ago and so like we could have those things right here to like pick and grab it up my favorite thing is getting to sketch out the designs. On the spot redesign. They get to improve their prototype right then and there. Then they get hands on improving their designs and further prototypes and they get immediate feedback. Did you guys do your stand already? We're just about to test our experiment. Oh, perfect timing. Make something that um, that would get um, pollen because we're running out of honeybees. So we're running out of honey and um, other stuff. So we need. So we're making like hand pollen things to um, help it.
to make a tower big enough to touch a ta the tape on the wall to shine it on the cubes and the cubes are supposed to have a shadow that touches oh. the tape on the wall. So what's your challenge? What do you guys have to do? Make a boat. Make a boat with what? That float. And we're trying to get as many bears as we can do. Oh. The one that gets most bears, the one that floats longer than the other ones, wins. So you're trying to get the most weight into a boat and you're using Look what all we can do. We can put the bears in here and then. Why are we why are we trying to do that? Where are we trying to get? We're going way to the middle school. Up yes. on the hill. Why, Disney Why? Because you can make the flooding. Because we're flooding. We're trying to get the water. We got this from a trash. You got that from trash. That looks like it might do pretty good. And where's your drawing on here? Uh, my drawing is right here. Okay, so what did you draw? A star. This is how you draw. Okay. Why Why do you think it'll work, Joseph? Because the sides are big. Okay. All right, you ready to test it? Yeah! All right, Joseph has put two. Here, Gracie. Gracie's going to put a third bear in it. Oh, it's still floating. Joseph, hold on. Let somebody else do it. Savannah, get a bear. I can't. No, we're not and, ready. All right, everybody scoot back. Everybody scoot back so we can see. Oh, my goodness, Joseph. Okay, here, Gracie. Here's three for you. 16, 17, 18, 19. It's still floating. Fairview Elementary is extremely bright. 